what will happen next is we will go from classroom to classroom and gather all the chalk dust and we will send the chalk dust into the atmosphere blocking out your sun leaving your cities in darkness ready to be invaded by my army of goblins as an experiment is nothing makes you feel more like a mad scientist or a madman in general than these liquid nitrogen experiments. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm set the water man behind the camera with the exception of handwriting is CNA loud. Omic heat. But before we get into the nitty gritty of the experiment, I want to introduce to you your two new equations that you'll have to use for the rest of your life. Ohm's law, the macroscopic Ohm's law, ver, ver, V equals IR, voltage equals current times resistance, and then the electric power, PIV, the power equals current times voltage. You'll need both of those for this. All right, so once again, we're looking for the latent heat of vaporization of liquid nitrogen, but instead of our heat source being an aluminum cube, our heat source will be a carbon resistor that will have electric current going through it. So this resistor will be inside of a vat of liquid nitrogen. And then as the current is going through it, it will produce ohmic heat. And so after some time, a mass of the liquid nitrogen will be evaporated. So let's see what equations we need. Well, let's start with that power, the PIV that I talked about. Well, the power is just the, the, the work divided by the change in time. Great, so then the, the work done on the resistor is IV delta T, and that work will be equal to the energy required to evaporate the delta M of liquid nitrogen. Yes, uh, the IV delta T will equal the latent heat of vaporization of liquid nitrogen. That's what we want. That's what we want times the delta M. So let's arrange it like this. You see this arrangement? It's linearized. You see, this would be the Y. This would be the slope, the M, and that would be the X. Okay, so I take this power, plot it on the ordinate, joules over seconds, and then on the abscissa, the change in mass or the change in time, grams over seconds, I could plot a line. The slope gives me what I want, the LV. Okay, so let's take a look at our table here that we're going to use. Okay, so we have a series of columns. Here, we'll, we'll, we, we want to, we're going to be measuring three things for each run, and the rest is calculated. We're going to measure the current in amps, the voltage in volts, and then this is calculated. We're going to calculate the resistance for each run using Ohm's law, V over I. And then this is our third measurement, the delta T in seconds. The change in mass is going to be the same for each run, four grams. Then you calculate the information for the abscissa, calculate the information for the ordinate, Ah, and then this column right here, the work, that's our check. That's our check because you see the IV delta T, well, that should equal LV delta M. Well, LV is around 200 joules over grams, and then this is the same, 4 grams. So this column here, each run should be around 800 joules. That's your check. If you don't get around 800 joules, you know you screwed up. Time to do that run again.